Cool, so we're with Mark Salofa in uh, Berkeley, California, and we came here to have a chat to him because he's one of my favorite Instagram uh, accounts to follow. He puts out a lot of interesting posts, and he's one of the people that I wake up in the morning and actually go and check what he's posted because it's a lot of motivational and inspirational things, not just about being a barber, but also about being a man. Um, so yeah, he's a native Kiwi and started barbering uh, a few years ago. So let me see what he got to say. So can you tell us a little bit about your background as a barber? Uh, I've been cutting, I started in 2008. Um, I went to a cosmetology school first. I went to a Paul Mitchell school. And so I'm licensed as a cosmetologist. And then after that, I did a crossover course to get my barbering license. After I did the barbering license, I stayed on to get my teaching credentials. I'm also a certified instructor. And then I thought, you know, starting this off as a second career and starting off a little bit later in life, I started off at 38 and being surrounded by folks who were just coming out of like college or junior college or starting a lot younger than me, I thought that I had to sort of advance myself credential wise um, to get a little ahead. So I applied as an educator for American Crew and did that for a year, which was a great experience. Um, just not, not only just the, the experience as a whole, getting to learn about products. Uh, but also doing what I wanted to do, which was some platform work. So I got to do some stage work with them. Uh, travel a little bit around the West Coast, the United States, doing classes and teaching salons. Uh, so that as a whole, um, just kind of getting me out there. This was even before I was working necessarily behind the chair. You know? um, and then I realized that education was sort of a big component that I really wanted to get into, which is initially why I got this, the teaching certi certification and getting both getting the um, educator's experience with American Crew. Um, after that, I worked for a barber named Barber Dan, and he's been cutting hair for 40 plus years. Two chair traditional shop located in Pleasanton. And that's where I really learned about sort of the gentleman's approach to barbering. Initially, I, all I really knew was like the urban barbershop environment. I didn't really know about, even though I'm a product of sort of the influences of the 30s, 40s, but these from my folks growing up. Um, I didn't actually see that there was that sort of environment to actually work in that. I mean, I've seen it in photos, but to actually see him and his interaction with his clients, his technical skills, which were different from what I learned in barber colleges, uh, sort of helped me advance even a little bit more further along. I mean, in barbering, I think I consider myself just your average barber, right? Perpetual student, I mean, far from ever being a master barber. I would never call myself that because I believe I'm a per perpetual student of this industry, always opportunities to learn. Um, and that's why I think I like the education side of barbering as well because I'm always going to be learning. So whatever little bit that I can learn along the way and share with others and learn from them as well in the process, I think it's a good thing. So. Why do you really love being a barber and what's your future plans? Um, I love being a barber, really. It's the, it's the interaction that I get the one-on-one -on -one that I get with the clients, the relationships that you build. It's amazing how you can go from being a total stranger to somebody to being almost like a best friend, uh, a therapist. So they'll, they'll go from the first appointment to hardly being able to open up, to just the cordials of saying hello and this is how I want my hair cut, to five months down the line, a year down the line, even maybe three haircuts down the line saying, this is what's going in my life, going on in my life. This is what's going on with work that I'm frustrated with. This is what's going on at home that I might be frustrated with. This is what's going on in my life, period, that I, I'm having a hard time getting through. And so a lot of people in this trade forget that as barbers, as hairstylists, but barbers in particular, because that's the side of the, of the chair that we're on in the industry, we are, it's almost, I want to use, I want to use the word ministry, okay? Because we're talking to them, we're, we're, it's like an outreach program, just like the art being in general, it's outreach. So the focus should be more on the relationships that you build so that you can build these men up as men, you know? 
build them up to say confidence inside. Whatever goes on emotionally, smile, get through the day. It's gonna be all right. Um, life is good, it could be worse. And when you can make that connection with the client so that they're smiling, yeah, they'll look in the mirror and they'll say, that's a great haircut. But they'll give you a handshake and say like, that advice you just gave me was needed today. And so that's sort of the extension of my Instagram, like you were mentioning earlier about the inspirational post. A lot of that is because as an extension of what I do here in the shop is I want to broadcast that outside the walls of just the shop. And I want to be able to help other people, not just my clients, but anyone else out there that might be going through a rough patch in life to say that it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Um, just like the folks in the Great Depression, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. So future plans for me would be to um, be able to allow more clients to come in and experience what I'm offering them, especially since I've, my business has grown over the last year that I've been here, that I'm unable to accommodate so many people because I get booked out so far out. So I'd like to maybe open up my shop to a few more chairs would be nice. Um, I would like to do a nonprofit organization for the Art of Being a Gentleman so I can go into more group homes or juvenile centers, high schools, wherever I can get to make a difference. Um, Barber College would be great also, so we can concentrate on the education side again and give back what I've learned. Um, and give back what I've learned sort of, but encompassing the gentleman side of it, you know, so that the barber can learn how to not just cut hair, but learn how to uh, interact with the client and have dialogue and have conversation that's meaningful, not just how's your day, um, and not just necessarily just sports, because I think talking about life to them too has been a big, the relationships that I've made over the time, just opening up to me in that way, talking about life, has been probably the biggest uh, push for me to keep doing what I'm doing. This is my better half, my little one. This is Jordan. Hi. <laughs> Jordan Michaela Jade Solofa is her full name oh and Jordan is 10 and uh, you know as a single father pretty much all her life for the most part you know um, and moving to California t um, about 12 years ago from American Samoa I don't have immediate family out here in California so uh, as a single parent and not having the support system of immediate family to sort of help me with her, becoming a barber or choosing to become a barber as a second career has really afforded me the opportunity to make a schedule that works around my time with her. So, you know, a lot of kids in this day and age, um, not even just in the States, but a lot of places, they don't get to see what, the f what it takes. F they don't understand the value of money at an early age. Um, because they don't see what their mom and dad are doing at the office. They only see them when they come home. You know? So with Jordan really being just behind the scenes as a part of that, she knows that, okay, if this is what it takes for my dad to earn a dollar, standing up all day, cutting hair, and um, her appreciation for that and for just the small things in life and not taking things for granted. So um, just for fun, I'll, clean, I'll, just, well, I'll help my dad clean up around the shop um, full of towels, you know, just make his life a little bit easier because <laughs> um, I give him too much trouble already. <laughs> Most Sometimes I do, mm. but you know, just to make his life easier, we just help out as a team and we'll always be a team, hopefully. <laughs> Did you promise? Sure. Okay. <laughs> that's sealed, that's, sealed. that's for life there. Cool. Good job, baby. Thanks. You crying? A little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't you get me started. <laughs> I had a feeling this was going to happen. <laughs> well, that's, you know, that's what we wouldn't have this kind of stuff <laughs> if Dad didn't work as a barber. Because you understand it, you know? Uh-huh. Oh, there. <laughs> Don't yeah. start crying. No, but it is. You know how Dad is. Yep. Yeah. So... A lot of this is is just, and as parents, even as barbers, we do it for for our families. You know? mm -hmm. and, and Dad's journey to do this is for you. you know? mm -hmm. Not even for you to one day take it over, 
but just that I can try to give you a better life. You know? so. <laughs> Love you. Love you too, Daddy. Okay.